Well, good morning. Glad that you're here. We're going to be looking in the, the book of 1 Thessalonians again. <clears throat> and I want to just pull over and uh, take some time this morning and look at the subject of rejoicing. The, the verse this morning is only two words. Rejoice evermore. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Uh, Paul had, had written to the church at Thessalonica there, and encouraging them to, to live for the Lord, and uh, particularly to look for the Lord, to live in light of, of His coming. In uh, chapter 2 and verse 12, he said that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto His kingdom and His glory. And then down in uh, chapter 3 and verse 12, the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another, and toward all men, even as we do toward you. And here's the reason, to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Uh, looking for Jesus uh, should motivate us to, to live for him. And as well, he wanted them to know they were not experiencing the day of the Lord. <laughs> Times were tough, uh, kind of like today, you know, things are different and we think, oh, what's, what's going on? Uh, well, we'll know uh, when Jesus comes and Jesus is coming. In chapter 5 and um, verse, verse 2, he had, he had told them to be looking for the Lord. He says, Yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as the thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. We're not going to be surprised that Jesus is coming. We don't know the hour, we don't know the day, but we're children of the light. And God has, has told us that he's coming. In verse 9, he says, God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. And then he comes in verse 11 to the word, wherefore, uh, wherefore. You know, because Jesus is coming again, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. Uh, we've, we've looked at this. That God tells us as Christians to, uh, to encourage each other, comfort each other, uh, to edify each other. And, and he uses words that are collective, um, together, uh, one another. Uh, this, this is such an important part of our Christian life is, is our church. And the, the partnership and the leadership that we have. This book was written to a church in chapter 1, verse 1, uh, to the church of the Thessalonians. And uh, it's written to our church. As a church, we need to be uh, encouraging each other, uh, building each other up. And we, uh, we started last week looking at three things, at least here at the end of this book, that he talks about that will help our church. Uh, one, verses 12 and 13, is, is leadership. We beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. He also talks about partnership, and we work together. Now we exhort you, brethren, 14, uh, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. And then we see that God uh, uses us to, to worship together. He says that, that that's one of the key things that will help us to do what's right together. And uh, that's the last part here. And he starts with rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesyings. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I think in, in all of this, verse 16 is such a pivotal and, and key truth. Rejoice evermore. You know, his message to them was not only don't be afraid, but rejoice. Rejoice. More than just not doing the negative, do the positive. Uh, rejoice in the Lord. Uh, I, I think it's a key characteristic of a healthy church, is that it's people who are re rejoicing in the Lord. And we have so much to rejoice about. 
We have so much to rejoice in. And the question I want you to consider this morning is, what would stop you from rejoicing? What would stop you? Uh, now, this doesn't mean that we'll never experience trouble or sorrow. Uh, we do. Uh, it does mean that in our distress, we have hope. Like he says in Romans 15, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope <laughs> through the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, turn, if you would, to Romans chapter 12. Let's look at a, a few verses there. Romans chapter 12 and verse 12. And I want you to see that in our rejoicing, we are often in distress and need. Many of the things he talks about here are areas of difficulty. Romans 12, verse 12, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints. Uh, you know, saints have necessities because they don't have what they need. You know, there's things that they need, and we're, we're helping them. Given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. There is sorrow, but as Christians, even in our sorrow, uh, we can rejoice because we have hope. In uh, 2 Corinthians 6, he puts it this way, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. And as Christians, we understand that uh, Christian joy is not the same as happiness. Uh, you, can, you can work up happiness. You can go to Disneyland and be, be happy. Uh, it, it's like David in uh, 1 Samuel 30. You remember when they'd gone through such a distressing time. They'd been at, at war and they came back and all the women and children had been taken captive and, and taken away and all their goods. And uh, the men were so distressed. The Bible says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. David had learned to rejoice in the Lord. Even in that difficulty, uh, he turned to the Lord because he knew there, that's where their hope was. Someone has defined Christian joy as the emotion springing from deep down confidence that God is in perfect control. Uh, I think that's a pretty good definition. Christian joy. Let me give you three things about Christian joy. Uh, number one, it is commanded. God tells us here, rejoice evermore. In Philippians 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Just in case you missed it the first time, he repeats it. God tells us to rejoice. But we need to understand the second thing, it's not natural. We're not just talking about working up feelings here. We're not talking about something that God is not a part of. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, he makes a comment about joy, verse 6. 1 Peter 1, 6 says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. He says, we can rejoice even though we're going through trouble. But notice that word, wherein. That, that means there is something he's just said. Well, verse 5 who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So at least two things in that verse that is the wherein. Uh, we're saved, we have the Lord Jesus, and Jesus is coming again. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now, for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Uh, God is involved in, in our rejoicing. In verse 3, he had said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And then later in verse 8 he said, Whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's Jesus who is the source. God is the source of our joy. It's commanded. It's not natural. And it demands our cooperation. That's important to remember. Uh, there's things that we need to do to be involved in, in this rejoicing. Uh, like he says there in verse 8 of 1 Peter 1, uh, Whom having not seen, ye love. We need to love him. Though now ye see him not yet believing. We need to believe him. Uh, over in Colossians chapter 3, he mentions some things. Colossians 3 and uh, verses 1 and 2.
if ye then be risen with Christ, he's just saying, if you're saved, seek those things which are above. That, that's part of rejoicing in the Lord. We're going to have to seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. We're going to have to uh, direct our affections. That's our part. Uh, it demands our cooperation. And uh, we can rejoice in the Lord. God has made it, it possible. I want to take two, uh, two questions. Why rejoice and why not rejoice? And I want to give you six things about each. Six things. Um, you could probably have a hundred about each, but we, we won't do that this morning. Um, number one, why rejoice is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and, and verse 24. We rejoice to appreciate the character of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24 says, Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. We, we rejoice because God is faithful. We can trust him. He has a purpose. He has a plan. Uh, Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. In uh, Psalm 28, he says, and uh, just read it out for you, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. Because God is strong, because God is faithful, uh, we rejoice. Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 61, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. We're depending on God for our salvation. Uh, we can trust him. Uh, we rejoice because his character is unchanging. And uh, we know that he will, he will do what he said. We rejoice, secondly, to appreciate the work of Christ. In uh, Luke chapter 2, when uh, Jesus was about to be born, the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. <laughs> Even just his coming uh, was a, a great point of, of rejoicing. In John chapter 15, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. We rejoice in the, the work of Christ. We appreciate his, uh, his work. Uh, his word has given us the, the ammunition we need. Uh, his work has, uh, has done what's necessary for us to rejoice. In uh, 2 Peter 1, verses 2 and 3, a verse that some of you have learned, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Now, his work, Jesus' work, has supplied everything we need for life and godliness. Man, that's, that's something to rejoice in. We rejoice in the character of God. We rejoice in uh, the work of Christ. Uh, our riches are in Jesus. Thirdly, we rejoice to appreciate the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 17. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Uh, you're probably aware that joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and so on. Uh, we rejoice and appreciate the ministry of the Holy Spirit in, in our hearts and lives. In uh, Romans 15, 13, a verse that we've used already, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost who gives us that, that power, that hope, that joy uh, that we need. We can rejoice in the Lord because of the character of God, the work of Christ, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we can rejoice in the Lord to appreciate salvation. Now, if you're saved... I mean, what can happen to us that salvation is not going to be better than? You know, it's, there's, there's just so many things that happen to us in life, but we're still saved if we've trusted Christ as our Savior. It's like the, the man held up at gunpoint, and the guy said, your money or your life? He said, you can't scare me with heaven. <laughs> you know, uh, salvation uh, takes care of those things. In uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and Verse 9, he says, God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. Saved. 
in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 17 and 18. We've looked how uh, that we're going to be caught up. That we're going to be together with him in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air and ever be with the Lord. And he says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You know, salvation. Uh, there's coming a time when that will be face to face with Christ our Savior. You know, now we look in the, in the book and we believe. That's where our faith is. But then it'll be face to face. We rejoice in that. In 2 Timothy 1.12, someone has written a song to this, and what a blessing. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. You know, no matter what happens to us, we have our hope and trust in the Lord, and we rejoice in him because of salvation and our, our future in him. We rejoice in him to appreciate the Bible. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4, we read, uh, we're not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You know, as Christians, we read God's word, God's Holy Spirit helps us uh, with his word, and we have an understanding of the times. We have an understanding of what's gone before and what's coming after. You know, you see such foolishness being spouted about millions of years and this and that. Uh, listen, uh, God has created time and God will end time. And uh, we, we are, appreciate God's word. We're not in ignorance of these things. 1 Peter 4 and, uh, and verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Now, we know that because of God's word. We can rejoice. Even though we go through difficult times, Jesus is coming again. And you know, this uh, situation we're going through now, it's caused a lot of Christians to think, maybe it's soon. <laughs> maybe it's soon. <laughs> and that's exciting. Well, uh, one more. Uh, we rejoice to appreciate Christian fellowship. You know, it's a, it's a blessing to have brothers and sisters in Christ uh, to encourage us. Uh, sometimes to rebuke us, <laughs> sometimes to, to work things out with. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and uh, verse 16, when he says rejoice evermore, uh, that's part of this uh, comforting yourselves together and edifying one another that he talked about in, in verse 11. You know, we rejoice together. Uh, we rejoice in, in our fellowship. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 3, 9, it said, What thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God. You know, there's a blessing in, in Christian fellowship. Jesus had said in John 13, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. He said, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. God's not just called us as individuals. He's called us as individuals together and given us uh, the, the joy of, of Christian fellowship. Uh, let me ask you, are you grateful for these things? Uh, later on, uh, um, the, the Bible says, uh, later on in my notes, uh, I was going to say in Psalm 103, he says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. <laughs> we need to be careful we don't forget these things. Sometimes we get so focused on the difficulties of life, uh, we forget the character of God. We forget uh, the result of our salvation, you know, the work of Christ, the ministry of the Holy Spirit you know, through those times, uh, the Bible and, and Christian fellowship. God, God has blessed us in so many ways. Uh, we should rejoice. What would stop you from rejoicing? Well, there are some things that uh, hinder us, that's for sure. And I think one that, that comes, and uh, be careful with this, but uh, sometimes people don't rejoice because they're not really saved. You know, there's, there's people who are religious and, and they know all the words and, and maybe they go to all the meetings and so on, uh, but they're like what Jesus talked about when he said uh, the seed fell in stony places in Matthew chapter 13. And, and there's, a, there's an immediate growth, but then it, when trouble comes, it, it dies. Uh, and, and he said the reason was there's no root. You know, there's people who have a form of godliness, but they don't know the power. They, they deny the power thereof. Uh, a false salvation. They're not born again, and as a result, the Holy Spirit is not in their life to help them. 
Everything they do has to be natural. Uh, they don't respond like a Christian. Now, if you feel like you fit into that category, man, you, you need to sort that out. You need to have assurance of, of your salvation. Uh, you need to know the Lord. But you know, as Christians, uh, there are, are plenty of hindrances that come along. Do you know Satan wants to hinder us from having joy? He doesn't want you to enjoy your Christianity. Uh, 1 Peter 5 talks about be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Listen, Satan roars. Most of what Satan does is just noise. But it scares us. And we, we quit rejoicing in the Lord because we're, we're living by fear. God says, he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God says, resist Satan in the faith. Steadfast in the faith. And it says he'll, he'll flee from you. Uh, Satan wants to steal your, your joy. Uh, ignorance will steal your joy. Uh, many times people don't rejoice because they just don't know what God has said. 1 John 1, 4, he says, These things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. The more you know God's word, the more opportunity you'll have to be rejoicing. <laughs> I was just reading the book of Isaiah. Sometime take the opportunity just to read to yourself out loud. And, and it's quite an interesting experience to hear yourself read, read the scriptures. Read the first five chapters of, of Isaiah. If it doesn't move your heart, there, there's something, something wrong there. Uh, listen, God's word will help you to rejoice. Uh, ignorance will steal your joy. God's word is the foundation for our joy. In John 8, Jesus said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. God doesn't want you to live in fear. He wants you to rejoice. Unbelief will steal your joy. Jeremiah said, Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. He, he understood, you know, not only knowing, but believing God's word, acting upon God's word. That, that's where joy comes from. You know, doubt destroys joy. It, unbelief is different than ignorance. You know, sometimes we just don't know what God has said. Well, there's a cure for that. Get in there and find out. But then sometimes we know what God has said and we just choose not to believe it. Uh, God calls that hardness of heart and he calls that an evil heart of unbelief. Man, that's pretty serious. That means it's a sin problem. And uh, God deals with that. We can take care of that. It doesn't take a long process. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Uh, sin will keep you from enjoying your Savior and your Christianity. Unbelief. Doubt destroys joy. Uh, where am I? Fifth one, ingratitude. If you're not thankful for what you have, you're not going to rejoice. And if you'll get into God's word and see what you have in the Lord, man, what a blessing. Uh, you remember, was it, was it Paul and Silas that in, in prison they sang? <laughs> you, you know, that was not a nice situation, but they had the joy of the Lord because they were rejoicing. Uh, they were grateful for what God had done for them. There's a verse, 2 Timothy 3 and verse 2. It's where he's talking about this know and in the last days perilous times shall come. Verse 2 says, men shall be lovers of their own selves. And one of the uh, things that happens is they'll be unthankful. Men should be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and he, and he goes on. And part of ingratitude is we just love ourselves too much. You know, we're so concerned about self that we're not grateful for what God, or even many times what others have done for us. You, you know, you can never do enough for an ungrateful person. It, it'll never be enough. And if that's you, that needs to change. You're a Christian. You need to be able to rejoice in the Lord. God has given us that command. He said, it, this is not natural. This is not something where you can have enough of something and then you'll be happy. <laughs> this is not something where you can go someplace and then you'll be happy. Where you are and what, with what you have, you need to be rejoicing in the Lord. Ingratitude will steal your joy. Start by thanking Him for what you have. And let me tell you, you can go a long time listing 
all the good things that God has done for you. Uh, the last one I'll mention is false expectations. False expectations will steal your joy. Uh, a lot of the problems we have in life are what we expect. You know, we, we get married and we expect something. We get a job and we expect something to happen. It's our expectations that, that cause us problems. And it's the same with the Christian life. In John 16, Jesus said, These things I've spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Isn't that an interesting verse? God expects us to have peace. <laughs> Even when there's tribulation because of his victory over the world. You know, God hasn't promised you a happy life, a healthy life, a wealthy life. And yet there are cults who will teach, oh, if you're really trusting the Lord, you'll be happy, you'll be healthy, you'll be wealthy. <laughs> Listen, those are false expectations. If God hasn't said it, then it's not by faith that we believe it. Uh, false expectations. You know, Paul had learned, he, he said in Philippians, I've learned what's, whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. And he goes on and says, I know how to be abased, I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then that grace, great verse that we use for so many things, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I think he's talking there about rejoicing in the Lord. He's talking about contentment. He's talking about the peace that passes understanding that comes from the Lord. Listen, that's available to us as Christians. I mentioned earlier, the psalmist said, don't be forgetful. Don't be forgetful of all the blessings of the Lord. In troubled times, man, that's, that's a good thing to remember. Don't be prayerless. Rejoice in the Lord. Uh, that verse in, in Philippians, when he says, re, uh, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, one of the very next thoughts is, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Man, that, there's a blessing there, isn't it? Don't forget to pray, and pray with thanksgiving and you'll have the peace of God. You'll be rejoicing in the Lord. Don't be led by your feelings. You know, the world will promote this idea that you need to just follow your feelings, follow your heart. Uh, joy is not the result of feelings. It's the result of faith. And the problem is, uh, we get into tough times, and, and we think, well, if I can just get rid of this tough time, I can rejoice. No. That's when we especially need to rejoice. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The joyful Christian thinks more of his Lord than he does his personal difficulties. The joyful Christian thinks more of his spiritual riches than his poverty here on earth. The joyful Christian thinks more of his glorious future than his present pain. What a blessing to, to know the Lord. You know, when, you, when you understand rejoicing in the Lord, it, you understand it's not only possible it's desirable. It's where we want to live. What would stop you from rejoicing in the Lord? Listen, find out what that is and get rid of it. And number one, make sure you've trusted the Lord. Are you saved? Now, Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, God says that each one of us is a sinner who needs a Savior. Will you trust Him in that? Will you rejoice in the Lord that you're a sinner? Uh, he says that He's the only Savior. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Acts 4.12 says, neither is there salvation in any other. He's the only Savior. Now, will you trust Him in that? See, it's not your feelings that will save you. There's times when I don't feel saved, and I go to God's Word, and I rejoice, and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I've done that. God will do what He said. It's not your goodness that will save you. Listen, no one can be good enough to go to heaven. We're all born sinners. We've failed the test already. Uh, it's Jesus Christ that takes you to heaven. Let me just read a couple of verses and, and we'll quit. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, very familiar verses. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus 
and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, one of the verses in Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 24, Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Listen, you can count on the Lord to do what he says. When God says he'll judge sin, he's going to judge sin. But when God says Jesus is the way of salvation, Jesus is the way of salvation. You can trust him. Uh, he'll change your life. Uh, be saved today. And if, you're, if you are saved, rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> Why not? Uh, what better plan do you have? Uh, you know, God can help you in this. Uh, if you have questions or if I can be of any help, uh, please uh, call me, text, email. Uh, get on our website, fbcbrisbane.org. Uh, you can get that information there. The plan of salvation's there. Uh, we'd love to be of help to you. Uh, knowing the Lord is, is such a blessing. And God wants you to know him. That's why he made you, was to have fellowship with him. Let's go to him in prayer and, and we'll be dismissed. Father, we are so grateful for your loving kindness. Uh, Lord, you see us as we really are, and yet you still love us. Father, you see our, our very thoughts and the intents of our heart. And sent your son Jesus to, to pay for our sins. Thank you, Lord. Help us to love you in return. Lord, I pray if there are those listening this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would speak to their hearts and draw them to you. Help us as a church to rejoice. Help us to be a rejoicing people. And Lord, that people would see and want to know our Savior. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.